Hello, my name's Lorcan Archer, and you're once again very welcome to the Metal Ireland podcast. This is our Sweet 16, our 16th podcast already. Getting slightly emotional here, but I promise you, this is a good one. This week's show is brought to you in association with O'Reilly's Bar and Music Venue of Banbridge in County Down. They're an established bar, and they've recently had a major refurbishment. They want you to know that they're very much open for bookings, with a great live venue available for both rock and metal shows. They're in a great location and now boast excellent facilities for local and touring bands, situated as they are right between Belfast and Dublin. You can contact Kevin Smith for more details, and all the contact info is right there on our venue page. They're supporting Metal Ireland, so why not drop in for a pint and see what they've got to offer. Now today my guest is none other than Mr. Matt Calvert. He's the mastermind behind Dark Descent Records, who have risen in recent years to become an underground metal label of almost unbeatable quality. It's now pretty much the case that, once you've read about or discovered an excellent death or black metal band, you have to check to see if they're not already signed to Dark Descent. The man has basically assembled a roster that's world-beating. I'll be talking to him about the roots of the label, his Irish connections, and of course what he's got up his sleeve for 2015. Right now though, I've got a cracker from the Dark Descent roster, and it was in fact our album of the month last month. It's in the vein of the very finest of Candlemas. This is Crypt Sermon with the track Heavy Riders. You're listening to the Metal Ireland Podcast.
we move on to now our interview with Matt Calvert of Dark Descent. I started by beginning at the very start. Dark Descent, when did it all begin? Was it 2010 or did it actually predate all that? Uh, well, you know, I mean, uh, our first release was February of 2010. So, uh, But, you know, we had, or had started everything prior to that. So it was uh, around September, October of 2009, you know, we had uh, things to do. I had to build a have a website built, uh, you know, and before that, you know, you're doing planning or, you know, you're uh, uh, talking to bands, signing, you know, bands for uh, future releases. So, mm-hmm. you know, even though our first release was 2010, we were, uh, you know, doing the work or I was doing the work uh, in, in 2009. So uh, uh, over five years now. Was uh, was Dark Descent your first um, foray into into the, the realm of uh, releasing heavy metal records or do you have do you have a previous record in regards to that? No, no, it was the first time, actually. It wasn't anything that I had, um, you know, sought to do or, or, or planned to do for years, actually. Um, I had a, uh, there was a younger guy that uh, lived near me, and he was, uh, in, he wanted to find someone to release his uh, second album uh, that he was working on, but he couldn't find a, you know, a suitable label. So uh, I had a little bit of time uh, and money at the time. I, I just finished the divorce, and I was working on a, working on a second job, but I didn't really need the money. I just wanted to keep busy. So I had a little bit of money stashed aside, and I told him I'd help him out and uh, kind of turn into a label uh, at that point. Um, needless to say, his release never got released, um, and I just kind of, you know, went the uh, total opposite way with it and just, you know, it kind of steamrolled from there. So actually, our first release will be five years uh, um, on uh, Tuesday, February 3rd, 2010, so oh. five years now. Happy birthday. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In terms of Dark Descent, it is comprised, of course, of yourself, but is there anybody else who's involved in the process as well? Uh, I do have several people. Um, Eric, Eric Muscle, he helps me with uh, the layouts and the graphics and things for the label. Uh, he, he's the one that's um, you know, in charge of uh, the sub-label that uh, we have, Unspeakable Acts Records. He's been helping me since the beginning with that sort of stuff. So uh, I also have a couple guys that, that help me out uh, you know, with the day-to-day kind of distro uh, shipping types of things. Um, sure. One of the guys plays in uh, uh, Nightbringer. He was on the last Chorophobia album. Uh, uh, plays in Cursus. You know, these are these are musicians and these are guys that are you know into metal. So, mm-hmm. and that that's basically it. Uh, outside of that, you know, I, I you know if I need help with the website, I have a guy that can help me. Uh, you know, uh, so I, I don't. It's not all me, um, but you know everything goes through me, and I I I, I just can't uh, you know say that I've got that tech savvy uh, to be able to to build the website and those types of things. I wish I really did. Sure. Uh, I wish I could. I wish I knew PowerPoint in and out, but I have to rely on other people, and and that's okay because these guys are you know uh, important me, and and uh, you know they've got the same kind of goals too. So it is very much still, I suppose, um, a cottage industry in that. I mean, everything's coming out of uh, your house or your apartment and um, you don't have a dedicated space for it, or do you? Um, well, actually, I bought, I did buy a place um, with the goal of, of, of turning um, one part of it into the dedicated uh, label, and it is. It's about a, it's a 1,200 square feet. Uh, you know, that's where we operate out of. So it's a dedicated place. It's actually, you know, part of the, the living space that I bought or the home that I bought. So. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, but we're kind of, uh, walls are closing in on us right now, so I've uh, um, been thinking about looking around for a small warehouse space because uh, for for renting, so uh, it just kind of it'd be nice to kind of have that dedicated space there. I mean, now we're we're isolated, uh, you know, from the rest of my home, but uh, you know, I, I have a, I have a tendency to to work too much sometimes. <laughs> I, I I hear you. So in terms of in terms of the work that you do in conjunction with the other guys, of course, to to support that work, like you said, you you started get going in 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 2010, and. Um, I suppose I suppose the very the very first thing that um, that came to my mind when I thought about the you know the, the formative stages of Dark Descent was I had um, a theory in regards to the name, but perhaps you could clarify where did you decide on the name Dark Descent or or how did you decide on that? Well, I, yeah, and it's not a theory about you know more. Uh, it's not a theory about uh, Dark Angel or anything. It's just I was you know trying to come up with you know uh, something that would represent. Uh, you know the label and and what I wanted to do as far as aesthetics with it. So uh, I and it just kind of came up and it, it kind of suited uh, you know I I, I what I envisioned uh, from the beginning and uh, kind of went from there. Okay, cool. Because I mean originally what I thought was um, obviously that survival horror game that came out, um, Amnesia: The Dark Descent actually came out in 2010. And I was just thinking, maybe there was a crossover there. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have any. Yeah, I don't have any time anymore to play any video games. And and if I did, I think I'd probably, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I grew up in the '80s, so uh, I, mm-hmm. 
spent a lot of time in arcades, but uh, it would probably be one of those older games. But yeah, I, I, I've heard of the game, and I, I know if I search Dark Descent, that's the first thing that's coming up. So. Yeah, of course, but there's no there's no uh, there's no intentional uh, no. correlation between the two anyway. No. Okay, that's that cleared up. And the Dark Descent logo, yes, it does have some sim- similarities between uh, you know uh, the, the Tulsa Doom logo as well. So yes. Uh, so, but uh, the Tulsa Doom one might have been a little subliminal, you know. Right. But, okay. uh, you know, it's got its. Uh, we've got our own touches on it. You know. Yeah. As a label, though, it's quite. Um, you know, it's got quite the impact. Um, it's something that I recognize now. Those two dragons facing each other. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It. Um, you know, it's got that uh, uh, shape that uh, if you look at it, and, and I've, I've seen it on the bottom of flyers with other uh, other you know uh, logos, and it does kind of catch your eye right away because of the shape and you know the look mm-hmm. of it. So. When you started to get things together in 2010, and and you started to to actually release music, did you kind of uh, go into it with the idea of knowing that there were certain groups that were perhaps in the in the formative stages that you would like to release music for? Was it a case when you were when you were kind of progressing with the label in that early period? Were you thinking, oh, these are bands that I particularly like to work with, or um, did it just come across, come about very very naturally like that? Or uh, well, you know, um, a couple things kind of kind of happened. You know, I, I mean, I I've been listening to music for a long time, so it wasn't like I was uh, not hearing new music or or hearing you know other bands, but I did uh, go out and, and when we first started and search. Uh, a little bit more, you know, and, and, and I found bands that were, you know, early beginnings because, I mean, basically, you know, that's what I would rather do is I'd rather build a, a band and, 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 you know, see a band from the beginning and, you know, up to, you know, you know having a following rather than signing a band that, you know, has five or six albums out and, you know, you're just another label on the cog. So, you know, my plan is always to work with the younger bands. So, you know, I did a lot of listening and, you know, sent off quite a few emails, and, you know, in mm-hmm. the early stages, you know, um, it was a little bit more difficult, obviously, for me, because nobody really knew me, uh, so uh, right. it was it was more or less me selling myself. Who would be those early groups that, that the Dark Descent um, kind of made their made their beginnings with? Well, uh, there's quite a bit of them, uh, but, you know, the early ones, you know, I mean, Horrendous, uh, for example, um, they were one of the first bands that, uh, you know, we worked with, and they just released their second album, and it's been quite popular. Um, uh, there's other bands, Adversarial, uh, from Canada. Um, they're working sure. on their second album now, uh, and it's going to be released in 2015. Let's see. Oh, actually, one of them just reformed. As a matter of fact, that was our first release uh, in February uh, of 2010. It was Burial and Location, and uh, they just reformed, and they're uh, on tour in Germany right now. Oh, wow! They're they're back from the dead, eh? Yeah, yeah. They've got um, uh, all of them uh, minus one of the original members. Uh, but uh, they're touring and everything's going good, so uh, now I expect them to be working on some uh, new material. I've had a chance to meet those guys too, you know, and uh, do a little bit of traveling and get around and, 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 and see a lot of the band. So uh, nice guys too, so um, I'm excited to see what they can come up with. Speaking of, uh, of traveling and getting around, you're, you're in Colorado Springs. I was curious about how that how that's worked for you as a location. Was it ever a case where you looked into the local scene and and saw groups there that you'd like to um, you know to work with, or how has actually been positioned there helped you or not helped you? I mean, as a, as an actual base of operations. Well, I I, I came here I came here um, uh, after the label started, as a matter of fact, and in, in my first uh, several years of running the label, well, up until April 2012, I actually had a full time job. So. Uh, mm-hmm. But at that, at that point, uh, this is where I was uh, living uh, for my work, um, and I decided to settle down here. I really like it here. It's just a, a beautiful place, you know, and uh, none of that other stuff seen, uh, all that didn't matter because, you know, I mean, I'm not really part of the scene here, you know. I mean, it, we're, you know, I'm, I kind of operate, do my own thing. I go to shows. People, you know, more and more people know me around here and everything like that, but it's not, you know, I, I wasn't looking to – to, hey, they got a vibrant scene down here. Let me move down here. It was more coincidental, you know. And and now we're just bringing, you know, what we do to, you know, this area. Yeah, of course. So it's it's been more, just, like you said, just incidental. That just happens to be where you are. But you you can do your work from anywhere in the states, really. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really can. I mean, as far as locales are concerned and, and you know, and, and convenience and everything, this is perfect for me. Um, I've got my space, you know, I've got, uh, you know, around here, you've got, uh, you know, some beautiful scenery, but um, I'm also located about, uh, you know, two kilometers from the from the nearest post office. So, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I've got those conveniences, but uh, I mean, I've got, you know, my beautiful backyard with the, with the, the view of the mountains, uh, you know, and everything else. So, uh, you know, it, it helps me with my sanity. It's a great place to live, but, you know, it's got its conveniences for me too. So, but I, I really could, outside of some more remote locations in the United States, I could operate anywhere really sure but i guess you, like you said with uh being in, in colorado and it being such a such a dramatic place you do have the luxury if you're just getting buried under you know parcels and deliveries and distribution you can walk out into your back garden and just gaze on uh you know on some nice nature as well yeah yeah i mean there's tons of beautiful stuff i mean I can go for a hike or for a walk up in the mountains or whatever so yeah there's all kinds of stuff i mean this is where the u.s olympic tra team trains so uh really nice excellent good stuff well, what I was going to say as well was, it seems like lately there's been a particularly strong run um, from Dark Descent. We recently put together our end of year uh, poll for all our writers on our team. And needless to say, uh, quite a few Dark Descent uh, releases figured therein. In terms of how you would go about um, signing a band or taking a band on, is it simply a case where you would invest the time in investigating the band in the music and enjoy it yourself and then pursue it? Is that how you would go about actually signing or, or, or actually taking on a band? Because it seems like the cream of the crop, you, you've been able to you've been able to get them on Dark Descent in the last while. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I get uh, uh, nowadays it's more of, uh, you know, I get things coming to me, you know, rather than the other way around. Uh, and, you know, it's nice. But, you know, sometimes I do reach out, you know, things catch my ear or. Um, I'm interested to work with, you know, a band, and I'll, I'll reach out. But um, a lot of times, you know, I'm I'm being uh, emailed or I'm being sent something in the mail or I'm being uh, sent a message on Facebook, and I listen to it, you know. And I, but but you know, I'm feasibly, I can't I can't go through every submission. And I can't give everything a full listen, you know. But uh, you know, it's, it's how people present themselves. I mean, if I immediately get an email or I, I get a correspondence and you know, it lists stuff that's totally not related to what we do, you know, I can easily dismiss that one. Yeah. So, but, you know, if something catches my ear, you know, I'll, uh, and I haven't heard it before, then, you know, I'll continue to listen uh, and, you know, hopefully I, I see something there. Uh, but that's kind of the, the way it goes. Um, I, I do like the stuff that we do or I wouldn't release it because I wouldn't feel comfortable, you know, putting my name on it and, and you know, kind of getting it out there. But, but you have reached, I suppose, that kind of a nice mass as a label where instead of you going out and introducing yourself to bands people are coming to you and you know presenting themselves to you rather than vice versa yeah well that's a byproduct obviously of the the you know the label's popularity and everything and that's and that's great because it saves me a lot of time now uh yeah. but you know I, I can kind of pick and choose and things like that so uh yeah and, and of course i do have to, to to like it you know i do have to yeah in terms of how things have progressed now over the last couple of years could you point to a single tip point where you thought that you know it was changing from you presenting yourself to bands to to groups coming maybe to you and the reputation getting a good label was there a watershed release or an album you think that 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 actually pushed you in that direction was there a release a specific release i don't think it was one specific release i think there were there were quite a few releases that actually you know led to that point you know and and it's been that way for you know several years now, so I can't really tell you exactly when that kind of happened. But I, I and I can't tell you it's just like one album that you know all of a sudden we got thrown on the radar. But you know uh, for sure these these last releases last year uh, played a big part of uh, taking it to another level. But before that, uh, you know we had you know some some releases that got quite a bit of attention, like the first Miasma album. Mm -hmm. You know, some compilations that we did, like the Time Goal compilation and, and some other compilations and things like that. So those all played a part, you know, and, and, and it really started from the first release, to tell you the truth. I mean, that first release, the Burial Invocation release, was, was uh, very well regarded and, and uh, it went pretty quick. So um, I can't say that, you know, I, I will point to one specific release, but it's just kind of a, a culmination of everything. In terms of uh, in terms of how the label has has cultivated a quite a, a reputation for excellence, I mean, 
in particular the the Time Ghoul um, compilation jumped out as me because it was one of the first times that I had actually clocked the existence of the label. I guess what was that like putting that one out? Was it was it a labor of love or well uh, quite difficult? Uh, th- that one has kind of a weird backstory because um, the guy that that I if you go back to one of the first questions you asked me about the, about the label and how we started the guy's album that we were p- mm-hmm. going to put out that that, that was going to be the first release that that we talked about and it never came to fruition. Uh, he was a big Time Ghoul fan. He was in correspondence with the band. His band was actually Time Ghoul influenced. So he, you know, actually communicated with, with these guys over MySpace and uh, had, had, had had a dialogue. And he had talked to me about releasing it, you know. And, uh, you know, but at the time there was a little bit of buzz that there was another label involved, um, you know, Profound Lore that was looking to release it. Um, and we kind of didn't really think anything of it. Um, uh, then we fast forward about two years later and um, I I started speaking with, uh, you know, Ted from the Crypt. Mm-hmm. I had worked with Ted, and, and Ted had told me how he was working on, you know, doing a Time Ghoul uh, uh, LP issue. And I said, well, that's funny because I'm talking to two of the Time Ghoul guys, and it turns out he was talking to the other two. Right. So, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. So we had joined forces, uh, um, you know, to kind of do a uh, uh, collaboration release. That's why you'll see, like, uh, the Dark Descent logo on the vinyl version and the CD version. Uh, you'll also see the Crypt uh, logo, mm-hmm. and we put that out. So it was uh, from the time that came out, to the time the label started. I mean, that was you know over two years in, in the making for that one. I'd say it was um, quite a bit of work went into it. I'd imagine. Uh... Oh yeah, uh, it was it was great. I mean, as far as the artwork, I mean the artwork. Uh, we had Mark Riddick actually contacted me and and you know said, hey Matt, you know I want to be on board. I love these guys. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I listened to him in the tape trading days, and I wanted to do the artwork. And I said, sure, man. So, uh, um, you know, he did a piece of art, and we weren't really digging the first thing that he sent our way, but the second thing was perfect, you know, and it ended up being that, uh, you know, awesome artwork that, that's on the CD and LP. What a band, though. Influential beyond um, their, their short existence. But um, I suppose I have to ask you, because it's always a question that, that perennially appears every year or two. Was there ever an indication that they were going to get back together and maybe do some live shows? Uh, you know, that's been talked about and bandied about between, you know, most of those guys uh, with with uh, probably Antonio, the drummer, being, you know, the, the, the most uh, vocal proponent of it. He's really wanted to. But uh, Jeff, the main, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the songwriter and the guitarist, he, uh, from what I understand, he's kind of a recluse, you know, so. Um, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I don't think... Um, I, if I was going to put odds on it, and I think I think the last time I spoke to Antonio on the phone, he was really interested in trying to do something like that. But that was about a year ago, and then I think he's kind of resigned to uh, you know letting it go at this point. But uh, yeah, it'd be pretty long long odds. So so long odds still at the moment. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> in terms of how the releases from Dark Descent aren't um, in any way confined to the Midwest of the states. Um, or even to the states themselves, they come from they come from all over. That I mean, there's a quite a focus even on um, on Finnish bands um, that Dark Descent has put out. Last year we had uh, the Corpse Est album and uh, the Lantern album, of course, before that as well. In terms of Finland, I mean, it's always had a great reputation for you know old school death metal. When you think of bands like Demolich, was it a case with those guys? You just reached out to them, where they came to you, or um, how do you feel about Finland and how, how it fits in with Dark Descent? Uh, well, you know, I. There's something about those guys over there, you know. I, uh, you know, they're kind of, uh, kind of a little disturbed, you know, uh, in Finland. So uh, I, I think that that actually helps them with their music, and and uh, you know, outside of some of the more popular, folky kind of, you know, all that kind of stuff. And when you get into the underground part and, and the bands that are playing, you know, the real heavy stuff uh, uh, there now, I, I, you know, they're like I said, a little darker, you know, and that, and that, that creates some awesome death metal. So, um, there's no, there wasn't a concerted effort to say, Hey, you know, we got all these Finnish bands and let's go start looking at Finland. But that just, like I said, I was attracted to what, you know, they were doing. Yeah. So, uh, darker, heavier, you know, those types of things. Uh, and, and, you know, it was just hitting the right spot. So, I mean, we have quite a few of them. You're right. Uh, uh, Desolate Shrine just released their uh, third album. You know, uh, the, there's another band called Gorphelia. They're about to release their second album in 2015. So, um, and like I said, they had the, something about what the Finns do, and, and I've had a chance to, to meet quite a few of the guys on on the bands that are on the label uh, between my travels and actually, you know, them coming here too. So, uh, man, it just kind of worked out that way, you know. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you said on your travels, um, you do get a chance to, to go out and obviously see, you know, the bands that are on the label live and dispersed around uh, the hemisphere as, as they are. Do you get to take time to go and specifically go and meet with bands or do you guys maybe meet up at festivals or at shows? How much time do you actually get to go and, and travel and actually meet with the groups or see them live? I mean, my, my, my job's flexible, you know, I've got the time when, when I can make the time, but uh, it's usually, you know, a more convenient location like Fest. Like, the last three years I had attended the Kiltown Death Fest in, in Copenhagen, so that was a good meeting point for me because we, it seemed like every year they had five to eight Dark Descent bands playing. Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, you know what, when when guys weren't playing that year, you know, they would come too, you, you know, even they didn't play. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a good chance to to uh to just to meet everybody or, or meet a lot of people in one location so I'm, I'm thinking about maybe it's time to go to finland this year i don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> get up there and, and see all those uh those weird bands in their in their home environment um from an irish perspective there's only one band really of course that that needs to be mentioned at the moment in terms of connection with um dark descent or maybe there's more bands who've had dealings with dark descent i don't know but of course zom are smack bang in the center of the you know, the, the underground metal consciousness of Ireland at the moment. And uh, Flesh Assimilation came out um, a few months ago after a substantial delay. Maybe you could tell me about your um, interaction with Zom, your, just your thoughts on the band in general and, and how you came to know about them or, or, or get involved with putting out the record. Well, I've been selling all their stuff, you know, since the beginning of demo LPs, all the, the other stuff, either through, you know, Patrick, Iron Bonehead or Dara, you know, Invictus and... Uh, actually, Daryl was one of the first people that um, I dealt with when we had our first release. It was really, it's really tough, you know. Uh, you're just this uh, nobody, uh, nobody's ever heard of before, and you have this one stupid little release, you know, and, and you go to contact people, and, you know, nobody knows you, and they don't want to waste their time, you know, just like me. I mean, I'd rather deal with somebody with 30 releases. It's just easier. I don't have the time. Sure. But Daryl, uh, you know, I reached out to him, and, and, um, and, uh, he took 30, 30 copies of my first release. You know, I was really excited. Wow, you know. So, uh, but over the years, you know, I, I, I had gotten to know him and chatted with him uh, quite a bit and everything like that. And I always remember, you know, he was one of the first ones. And one day I was talking to him and, you know, and, and we were chatting. And, and I said, hey, you know, if you ever want to work on a release, let me know, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it might be good, you know. And, and sure enough, you know, a few months later after that, he asked me if I would be interested in, you know, uh, uh, you know working on this album, album here uh, on this side. Uh, and I said, yeah, I mean, I, I love their sound, you know, really filthy, raw, fit in with everything we do. And it just kind of, you know, went from there. It was perfect. Yeah. And um, I guess it was, it was kind of a co-release, I suppose, between the two labels that, that went on. Was that how really how it worked out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just shared the costs, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, in, instead of just, hey, you doing your thing on your side and I'll do this and put a different logo, you know. Uh, we just split them. It's usually cheaper to run, uh, you know, if you a little bit cheaper to run, you know, so many units versus, you know, a small, smaller number. So it worked out for us. Excellent. That's good. Of course, um, Zom have just completed uh, a tour with Dead Congregation throughout Europe, and it seems to have gone very well for the guys. We obviously are quite proud and happy to have a good uh, death metal band like that um, from Dublin. It is something I've often been thinking about, though. Um, when I was thinking about seeing them live and I was thinking about the other good Dark Descent bands that are live, has it ever, um, um, have you ever uh, realistically approached the idea of maybe having, you know, a show or a roster show with just groups that would be, you know, on the Dark Descent uh, label or connected with Dark Descent? I mean, the obvious comparison there is what Nuclear War Now have done with their very popular annual festival. Well, uh, actually, we did. Not, yeah, we, but it was over here in, in Portland, and we did a two-day uh, show. Oh, okay, sorry. Mitochondrian, yeah, we had uh, nine bands playing two days. It was supposed to be ten, but uh, it ended up being nine, but uh, it was a great time. Yeah, you know, packed houses over there. Uh, people were excited. They really, really loved it, and we've, I have, I have actually thought about uh, um, uh, number two, and um, if we likely uh, did number two anytime soon, it would be in 2016, and it would likely be in Europe somewhere too. Wow, yeah, most, most definitely. But you would consider perhaps, like you said, transplanting that or, or having some sort of an event like that in Europe um, maybe maybe next year, 2016. Yeah, you know, uh, Nuclear War Now does that, and obviously, uh, you know, uh, they have no connections to set anything like that up in Europe. He's got, he's got his help, and he's got the guy that runs 
you know, uh, gets everything together in Patrick from Iron Bonehead. So um, I would also be relying on someone else to help me because, you know, I don't live at the location we'd be doing it. So uh, right, it's a matter of, yeah, it's just a matter of uh, logistical uh, you know, things working out and, you know, it, it does cost a little bit of money. I mean, you are putting up your own money. This isn't, you know, I'm not uh, one of these nowadays so-called promoters where they rely on pre-orders to fund the payments to the bands and the tickets. I would be funding all the money up front. So regardless of 10 people showed up or, you know, 20,000, uh, you know, <laughs> my money's going to be out there, you know. Sure, of course. So you need to make sure that it's well, it's well, uh, well taught out and well organized, I guess. Right, exactly. And 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 you know, there's all those uh, things you know uh, that that lots of people don't you know realize that they go into putting together a show, you know, support uh, backline, those types of things all have to be taken care of. So. Well, like you said, that's per- that's potentially in the uh, in the pipeline for 2016. I mean, it's just it's just an idea at this stage, but um. 2015 has just begun right now, and um, I'm sure it's going to be uh, another another packed schedule for you. Is there any particular groups that you're you're looking forward to release in uh, in the coming coming few months? Um, quite a bit actually, yeah, uh, for sure. Um, okay. You know, we were working on well, you know, we just had the Desolate Shrine uh, and the Golgotha albums were just released. Um, February is bringing us uh, that Crypt Urban album that uh, I'm really excited for everybody to finally hear. Uh, it's also going to bring us uh, the new Hackabits album. Um, uh, then we have um, uh, a new Eternal Solstice from uh, uh, Netherlands. Uh, it's going to be their first album in almost two decades now. Uh, and then the Morpheus Descends a compilation box set and a, a new 7-inch that we're releasing uh, for Morpheus Descends. But there's a lot of other things, too, that you know people are, are finishing up. Right now we're finishing up... Uh, uh, the full length for House of Atreus, a new U.S. Uh, band from uh, Minnesota. Yeah, uh, we we actually interviewed those guys, and um, yeah, that first release was was absolutely fantastic in that kind of melodic death metal sense. It was it was very very impressive. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I, and I um I heard the album already pre mastered version, so I'm excited to hear the final version. You know, uh, I expect to have that stuff within the next week, and we'll be ready to go to press. So that is going to be here uh, probably around May, and then uh, House of Atreus Adversarial is finishing up their album. Uh, Lantern. I heard some the the, the uh, Lantern Lantern seven inch tracks uh, uh, coming up. Um, uh, oh, and there's also uh, uh, Elor Sith. I'm, I'm doing their uh, e, uh, EP on on vinyl, and we signed a local band here uh, from Denver uh, called Blood, Blood Incantation. And they did a, a demo last year called Astral Spells. You can go ahead and listen to it on YouTube. But uh, uh, really cool. Uh, a lot of people uh, you know talking about them right now, um, and for good reason. And and I think they're and it catch smears too. So we've got kind of a lot of things uh, headed our way. And, you know, there's always things that, that end up finishing before the end of the year that might be end of year releases or might be the beginning of 2016. Wow. So an absolutely jam packed schedule then. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, it's not anything we can't handle. You know, I'm accustomed to, to working at this pace. And, but, it, and I wouldn't say jam packed, but, you know, they're spaced out, you know. Um, mm. But, yeah, you know kind of getting the music out there there's a lot of good stuff coming up and uh you know make it happen in terms of uh in terms of the style of what's coming out i mean dark descent obviously have a fantastic death metal roster of bands that do that but also you know there are exceptions to that you know bands that have, that have slightly different styles in that respect i'm thinking in particular i suppose of uh, the likes of the the emptiness album that came out last year are you in any way thinking that you might broaden out there might be some change or is it simply a case where you're going to just keep going after whatever quality music you hear and encounter i'm just wondering about the death metal focus on everything i mean it would be fair enough to say that dark descent is a relatively death metal focused re- record label um but would you we wouldn't would you accept that or uh i i mean the majority of our releases are death metal yeah you're right uh, you know, there's there are a few people out there, you know, I read the comments, you know, people talking about, you know, all of our Encanted clones and stuff, you know, and those are obviously uh, uninformed people, you know, or, or you know, dumb shits. Uh, right. <laughs> but, you know, we've got, we do, we do have, we do have a, a variety of stuff. I mean, we've got things from, you know, like Anguish and, and Crip Sermon, uh, you know, stuff like, you know, even going back to like Craven Idol, there's nothing you know, I mean, there's no incant- in, in, incantation clones, you know, I mean, it, it, it's a mixture of different stuff. Uh, it does tend to rely or um, weigh heavily on the death metal side for sure. Uh, but, you know, it's been a la- it's the last five years have been, a you know, a big boon for, for death metal. So, I mean, there's been a lot of great stuff. And, 
you know, I hear yeah. people saying, yeah, well, we've been a part of it, and that's that's probably true. So I don't know, uh, uh, you know, if I say we're a strictly a death metal label, but I don't go mm-hmm. out of my ways to change uh, what I'm hearing. I just think that's probably the majority of the stuff we get because obviously that's what we got sent early on uh, because that's what we started releasing. Uh, yeah. So it kind of went from there. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be ashamed of saying that we're primarily a death metal label because that's primarily what we do. But we have a lot of stuff that's not death metal as well. Right, of course. If a great underground metal band came along and popped up in your inbox tomorrow and presented themselves... You're not going to turn them away because they're not playing, you know, immolation style stuff. Like yeah, that. yeah, no, I mean, yeah, def- definitely, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, if it fits, and I like it, you know. I mean, Dan of Axat comes to mind. All those, you know, the bands come to mind. Crypt Sermon. I mean, that's any, that's the farthest you can get away from, you know, black metal or, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. So it, it just has to have that quality to it. I think, you know, that's all. That's that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, you know, I'm looking for some really great tunes. That's, you know, I want great songs, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what I was curious about as well was something, just to go back to something that you said earlier on as well, is that, you know, obviously you're you're running a, a busy little enterprise and you've got a limited amount of time in the day. If there was a, a young death metal band out there and they um, went, wow, I'd love to put out our first record on Dark Descent where all the good death metal and all the good, you know, dark and morbid music lately seems to be coming out of. Does professionalism count for a lot in the approach? I mean, in terms of how a band actually presents themselves and and goes towards you. What what recommendations could you give for a young band that are trying to uh, catch the attention of a label like that? Is there any is there any specific uh, simple guidelines that they could follow in regards to that? You know, I, I, probably everybody's different. Things I kind of look for. I mean, I, I've gotten I've gotten like CD submissions in the mail uh, before, and there is a CDR, and there's no contact info for the band. I don't have time to go search for it, you know? I didn't even give it a listen. You know, it could have been great stuff, but, I mean, it, it might sound a little arrogant to not give it a listen, but, I mean, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, what are you going to do? I kind of dissed that, but, yeah, I, I like something that's well-presented, obviously, not just a bunch of flyers thrown in, a, you know, or, or just an email with a bunch of download links or something like that, you know? Uh, the ones that catch my eye are the ones that somebody looks like they put some time into and some effort into. Uh, you know, I would rather have somebody present their music, tell me a little bit about themselves, uh, you know, give me some contact info. And as long as it's well thought out and well presented, I'd like to give it a listen. I, I You know, I just don't, uh, you know, I, I really hate tags. Let me listen to it. Let me determine uh, that on my own. Absolutely. So just those, those simple things like presenting yourself correctly, including basics like contact information and ensuring that like you just aren't talking absolute garbage when you do send an application that can that can go a long way. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I, I've had some really, really cool ones, man, you know, uh, and I said, wow, you know, I'm going to listen to this just because it's really cool. You know, I had uh, I had I had uh, one guy send me in some stuff and and on his handwritten letter, uh, he talked about some of the bands that he liked from the label and he drew the logos every time he, you know, mentioned the band in the letter, <laughs> you know. Uh, That's dedication. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, and I've had, you know, I've had the submissions, you know, with the, with the, uh, you know, contact info and all that other stuff in blood and, you know, or burned and things like that. So I get them all, I get all the, you know, all the different things and, you know, the unique ones, you know, I'll, I'll listen to. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, uh, I'm more likely to listen to every CD that I get in the mail uh, or tape that I get in the mail rather than every you know, uh, email that I get. Download because, link. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sometimes yeah. some of the, you know, somebody takes a little time to, uh, uh, or a little bit of their dollars to put it in the mail for, for me, you know, um, you know, I'll give it a listen. You can appreciate uh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I, not to say that, you know, cut and paste in an email and say, hey, this label's cool, uh, let me send this, is, 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 is a way that I'm, I'm not going to listen to it, but at the same time, it gets a little scrutinized a little bit more. I just don't have, and I, and, and I don't have time to contact every band back, you know, I, I'm I'm, I don't have a dedicated A and R guy, you know. I'm not like Century Media or some of these other labels. Yeah, it's all it's all it's all you really. Yeah, yeah. So so some guys might get a little hurt by it. it you know, it's not personal. It's just you know I've I've prioritized with what I do. You know. Yeah, absolutely. In terms of, as you said, other people that are involved with the label also having, um, you know, their role to play into things, I certainly wanted to speak a little bit about Unspeakable Acts. Uh, the first thing I suppose I was wondering was, why is there a sub-label at all? But I guess you've clarified that it is, in fact, um, Eric who is is basically running that as a sub-label of Dark Descent. Yeah, you know, uh, in addition to Eric, you know, being awesome and, you know, being the guy that's been there to help me out with the graphics and stuff since since day one, since day one, he also has really good taste. So uh, he had thought about, you know, 
releasing some things that kind of fit more under a, you know, a thrashier realm and the stuff that we weren't really concentrating on, which stuff that, you know, I love too, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, so it's not to say that I could never do any of that sort of stuff. It's just that his label is more focused on that side. Um, so he came to the, uh, to me about the idea and I said, Hey man, you know, well, that sounds like a good idea. You know, let's go for it. And, uh, you know, we worked out the, the details on, on how things would work and everything like that. But, it, you know, for the most part, it operates independently. Uh, I don't have any say in, in what it releases or anything like that, you know. But like I said, you know, just, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't want to see any bullshit, you know, because I'm, I'm putting my <laughs> name out there with it a little bit too. So, but, you yeah, know, yeah. he's got great taste. He, uh, he came by um, about two months ago and stopped by uh, in December uh, when he was passing through Denver and, you know, got to meet him finally. Um, Great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and actually, there's uh, going to be a new uh, sub label, much kind of along the same lines. Uh, the guy that I told you that uh, works on uh, a day to day basis here with me um, is a Nightbringer, and he's starting a more black experimental ambient uh, label t- called Umbra Die. Umbra Die. Okay. Great, I look forward to that because um the first uh the first um inkling I had that Unspeakable Axe was going was when somebody told me to to listen to that Sabatory album. It blew me away. It's a great it's a great little great little record. So that's nice to know that there's there's gonna be um future stuff coming out of another sub label as well on Dark Descent. Oh yeah, yeah. The first one should be coming soon. We're just waiting for the print work, but it's just gonna be a uh you know, a, a, a tape version, a nicely presented tape version of the fir- of the first Nightbringer album and then there's plans to do the other Nightbringer albums too on tape and uh, there's also some there's new artists as well that uh you know, I think are gonna open up some, some eyes for people too. All all different all different formats of course. One question I almost always ask everybody is, um, is there anything you're listening to at the moment? I know you're listening to lots of stuff all the time, but is there anything you're really listening to and enjoying at the moment now, be it metal or not metal? Just off the top of your head, what are you enjoying? Well, I, I, I'm always listening to stuff like, you know, we're down there all day long, you know, and, and you know, uh, I love to listen to the to the heavy metal. You know, I love Dio and love Priest, so that stuff's always going to be in the rotation no matter what. Uh, last couple of days, I listened to the new Eternal Solstice a, a few times. It was, it's really catchy and really well done. I, I'm excited for that one. Uh, you know, obviously, I do go through my phases before albums release to listen to, you know, our releases too, you know, yeah. and get into them and things like that. Um, so that's always in there. But, you know, it's just always a mixture. Uh, I, I don't know if, uh, but like I said, I, uh, this stuff like a priest and, and Dio, those things are always usually on heavy rotation, and that's whatever we kind of pick off the shelves on a day-to-day basis. I wouldn't say something's just kind of burning it up right now. You know, we're kind of an we're kind of an eclectic bunch down there, listening wise. And but the classics, uh, the classic priest, you know. Oh, I mean, I, yeah, I, I mean, I love heavy metal. I yeah. I can't. I I I I've, you know talked to people over the years and you know, younger people than me, you know, and they have no appreciation for that stuff. And I just, see, I, I come from a time when I don't understand that. I mean, that was the first extreme metal was heavy metal, you know, yeah. so the extreme forming music, you know, so, uh, but, you know, I, it will always, it, you know, when I want that metal itch scratched, you know, I usually turn to heavy metal, you know, just something, something about it. Yeah, some uh, words of wisdom there from Matt just to round things off. You've been listening to the Metal Ireland podcast. We'll be back very soon. Until then, I'll leave you with a track from Trench Rot from their Necronomic Warfare album, one of the finest recent releases from the Unspeakable Axe sublabel. This is Maddening Aggression. Until next time, all the best.
Nothing's like this 